Hey everyone, welcome back. This is our exam preparation series for AZ104 exam. And until today, my friends, we have covered so many questions that cover the length and breadth of the AZ104 exam syllabus. And continuing the same trend, today I'm going to take the important questions on the very important concept, and that is none other than Azure Kubernetes. And this one concept, my friends, it's a very important concept. And not just from the exam perspective, this concept is very important for you as the Azure administrator. Because nowadays, my friends, all the companies, all the applications, they all are moving from the monolithic architecture to the decoupled architecture. And that's exactly where the Azure Kubernetes comes into the picture. And in case you're really striving to become an Azure admin, then Azure Kubernetes is one concept that you really need to master on. So that's why my friends, in today's video, we are going to drill in into this concept, Azure Kubernetes, and let's take some few important and latest questions on this topic. Let's get started. So as I said, today we are going to focus on the Azure Kubernetes services. So let's pick our first question for today. Question number 176, part 13. The question is saying that how many resource groups are created for each AKS deployment? Your options are 1, option B, 2, option C, 3, and option D, 4. And the correct answer is option B, 2. So it's always two resource groups created whenever there is an AKS deployment. And friends, to validate our answers, I have picked this documentation from the Microsoft question and answer section. So here you can read that someone has asked, why are the two resource group created with AKS? So here you can see the question and down below you can see the answer given by the Microsoft employee. And the answer says that the AKS builds upon a number of Azure infrastructure resources, including virtual machine skill sets and virtual networks and managed disks. Now, this enables you to leverage many of the core capabilities of the Azure platform within the managed Kubernetes environment provided by the AKS. For example, most Azure virtual machine types can be used directly with the AKS and Azure reservation can be used to receive discounts on those resources automatically. And then you can understand to enable this architecture, each AKS deployment spans two resource groups. And here we are given what is the exact relevance of two resource group. To start with, we have this, you create the first resource group. This resource group contains only the Kubernetes service resources and the AKS resource provide automatically creates the second resource group during the deployment. And what is the second resource group used for? Well, it is known as the node resource group and this contains all the infrastructure resources associated with the cluster and these resources include the Kubernetes node, virtual machines, virtual networking and storage. So this is the exact reason why we need to have two resource group for each AKS deployment. And friends, as always, the links to all the documentation is given in the description box. Now, I've been receiving many questions from the viewers. Where exactly are the links to all the documentation that I refer in these videos? So all these documentation links are given in this Word document, which is the Google Word document. So you can find all the relevant links part by part or episode by episode. So once you reach here, you can click to any episode and then you will be taken to the relevant episode with all the links to all the documentation referred in that particular episode. So please make full use of this documentation to elevate your learning. And can I please request you one like and one comment from each of you to appreciate the time and effort that we put in researching all this documentation and bring the most relevant documentation for you. So please take a moment to like this video and do put a comment in case you're liking the documentation or in case you have some suggestions on improvement areas for us. And with that small request, let me jump on to the next question. Question number 177 that says that you deploy an Azure Kubernetes service cluster that has a network profile shown in the following exhibit. Now you have to select the drop down menus to select the answer choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in this graphic. And firstly, this graphic tells you that we have this pod CIDR and we are given with this IP address which is 10.2.4.0.0/16 and then we have this service CIDR which is 10.0.0.0/16 and along with that we are also given with the DNS service IP which is 10.0.0.10 and lastly we are given with the docker bridge CIDR which is 172.17.0.1/16 and friends, now that we're talking about this CIDR lot of time, and I have actually taken this concept in many of the previous questions, but how many of you actually know the full form of this CIDR? Let me know in the comment section. I really want to see how much of you are really understanding the concept and reading the documentation. 
Anyways, moving on, it also tells you that we have some networking options, which is the HTTP application routing. And this is currently disabled. And then we have these drop down menu, which were also called out in the question itself. So here you can see that first of all, we are given with the containers that will be assigned an IP address in the dash subnet. And you are given with these options or the IP addresses here. So you can read all the IP addresses here. So let me tell you the correct answer. But before I really jump on to the correct answer, let's check out what are the key words or the key sections given in the question. First of all, a very important point given in the question is this POD CIDR. You can check out the IP address here. And the second relevant and important information is this service CIDR. Now let me tell you the correct answer and then we will try to join all the dots. So the correct answer from the first drop down menu is this one here, the option one, which is 10 244.0.0 slash 16. And I must say this is a very interesting question. See for the containers deployment, we need a large number of nodes. And why do we need the large number of nodes? The basic idea of Kubernetes services that you are able to create a really scalable application. And that's why these large number of nodes should actually scales to the increasing demand. And you cannot change this address range once the cluster is deployed. And that's why my friends, because we want to accommodate a large number of nodes and we also want to keep an eye on the future demand. That's why we have picked this IP address here because this pod CIDR provides sufficient node accommodation, making it the right answer. And now coming to the second drop down menu here, it says that the services in the AKS cluster will be assigned an IP address in the dash subnet. And here you can see various IP addresses slash subnet, which is given after this slash symbol here. So the correct answer for this drop down menu is option B 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And Kubernetes and the networking is so much important these days because every application wants to be really scaled up. So that's why you need to understand how to use the Kubernetes networking with your own IP address ranges in the Azure Kubernetes services. And you can understand all of that in this documentation. Now let's jump on to the next question. Question number 178 says that you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory Azure AD tenant named Contoso.com and also an Azure Kubernetes service cluster name AKS1. And now an administrator reports that she is unable to grant the access to the AKS1 to the users in Contoso.com and you need to ensure that the access to the AKS1 can be granted to the Contoso.com users. What should you do first? And your options are from the AKS1 create a namespace. Then option B is from the Contoso.com create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint and option C tells you recreate AKS1. Option D is from the Contoso.com modify the organization relationship setting. And the correct answer for this question is option B from the Contoso.com create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 179. It tells you that your company has a Microsoft 365 tenant and Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com. Now the company uses several Azure file shares and each file share is assigned to a different department at the company. Moving on, the question is telling you that the department attribute in the Azure AD is populated for all the users and you need to ensure that the users can access the departmental file shares. Which two types of the groups should you use and each correct selection presents a complete solution. Now let's look at the options given here. A security group that uses a dynamic membership type Option B, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the dynamic membership type. Option C, a distribution group that uses the dynamic membership type. And option D is a security group that uses the assigned membership type. And lastly, option E, a Microsoft 365 group that uses assigned membership type. And the correct answer for this question is option A, a security group that uses the dynamic membership type. And here, my friends, you really need to understand what is the exact objective of the question. See, as I see, the main objective of the question is, is to manage the Azure Active Directory objects. Now, the groups that uses the dynamic membership that we have chosen as the answer of this question as well, it actually reduces the overhead of the access management by providing attribute based membership and also access to the resources. So based on the membership rules and the resulting access, this is the correct answer. And yes, my friends, in case you're not updated, the Azure Active Directory is now replaced with Microsoft Entra. So Microsoft Entra is the latest concept and I took a lot of questions on Microsoft Entra in the part 25 of this series. Okay, so now let me give you the next correct answer for this question and that is option B, 
a Microsoft 365 group that uses dynamic membership type. Now let me take a very similar question and that is question number 118. And at a first glance, you can see this question is very similar to the previous one. Friends, as I always tell you, the questions will be very similar in the Microsoft Easy 104 exam, making it really hard. And due to all these confusions and the tricks that Microsoft plays, I always try to group all the questions, all the variations of the question in the same part so that you can really understand the concept and also are updated with all the variations of the same question. Now let's read this question here. And it says that you have a Microsoft 365 tenant and an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com. Now you plan to grant three users named user1, user2 and user3 access to a temporary Microsoft SharePoint document library which is named as library1. And now you want to create the groups for the users and the solution must ensure that the groups are deleted automatically after 180 days. See, this is the very important line that the groups must be deleted automatically after 180 days. Which two groups should you create? Each correct answer presents a correct solution. And the given options are option A, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the assigned membership type. Option B, a security group that uses assigned membership type. Option C, a Microsoft 365 group that uses dynamic user membership type. Option D, a security group that uses the dynamic user membership type. And option E, a security group that uses dynamic device membership type. And the first correct option for this question is option C, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the dynamic user membership type. And the very next correct answer is option D, a security group that uses the dynamic user membership type. And you can understand all about the Microsoft 365 group expiration policy in this documentation. Read this documentation so that you are able to answer these kind of questions. And I think you can very well note the share point here. This was the part of our question as well. But in the real easy 104 exam, my friends, you can also be given with the other options such as Outlook, Teams, Viva Exchange and Forms. So please check out all the options so that you do not lose on any of the question. So friends, I hope you like the questions on Azure Kubernetes. This is just the start. There are a lot of concepts to be covered on Azure Kubernetes. So in the subsequent videos, I will cover some more questions on Azure Kubernetes so that you can really solidify your position on this concept and really master and crack the easy 104. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.